How's it going, folks? Stu here. New Celine Siamo alert. New Celine Siamo alert. There's a new Celine Siamo film out, guys. This is exciting stuff. I feel like this is a proper occasion. We need some kind of celebration thing. I wish I had like a party popper or something. I mean, fuck it. I don't have a real one. We just pretend and mime one if we wanted to. Jesus Christ. Are you alright? I didn't know it was that fucking power. I'm sorry. That's right, we have just been blessed with another new film from the one and only Celine Sciamma, the wonderful French filmmaker who's responsible for a whole butt-ton of amazing, wonderful, tender, lovely films, all the adjectives in the book. She did Water Lilies, Tomboy, Girlhood, Portrait of a Lady on Fire, she wrote My Life as a Courgette, I mean... Of course I was excited for whatever she does next. And whatever she did next was Petite Maman, which just screened at the London Film Festival. I managed to check it out. One of my most anticipated films of the year, that's for sure. And I'm very happy to report that Siama continues to not miss because this was an absolute delight of a film. This was just such a lovely, wonderful, warm hug of a film. It continues Celine Siama's wonderful ability to create these really tender, genuine, heartwarming worlds and, and very authentic real characters that you just empathize with and connect with immediately. It's honestly kind of eerie at this point how good Siama is at kind of disarming you with the most wonderful, lovely, sort of take on life and relationships. This one is about a very young girl who, in the aftermath of her grandmother's death, is back at her grandmother's house clearing it out with her mum. And she makes friends with another girl that she meets as she goes off into the woods to explore around her grandmother's house. And first things first, this is definitely Celine Sciamma's most kind of concise and, and pointed film. I think this thing's only like 70 minutes long. So definitely versus something like Portrait of a Lady on Fire, Sciamma's previous film, this thing feels like a much more kind of contained and, and smaller piece. But that's not to say that it doesn't pack an emotional punch. This thing was really quite moving in a very quiet and tender way. It's centered around a premise which never fully sort of reveals itself very on the nose or overtly to us as an audience, but you pick up on in the film and it doesn't really dive too deep into much stuff around that. It's very sort of, I guess, localized in that premise, which I think gives Siama the ability here to sort of really hone in on the emotions she's trying to pull out of this premise. I suppose in many ways it feels a lot like her simplest of films thematically, but I don't mean that in a negative way because often the simplest things can be the most effective things. And I think the emotions that this film brings up are definitely still just as effective as some of her more poignant or, or deeper dives through themes in her previous films. It's an exploration of, I guess, sort of letting go of family members or, or almost saying goodbye to family members, but through a child's perspective, which I think is a brilliant touch from Siama here. She's proven before with writing in films such as My Life as a Courgette and some of her earlier films that she knows how to write really sincere and genuine child characters. And it means that this whole thing's just so wonderfully watchable. I mean, you've got the comedy that comes from watching kids being kids. Their childlike approach to relationships and themes and the world it is just always fun to watch as an adult. But you also get that very particular bittersweet tone when you're talking with kids or watching a kid go through an emotion which is much more complex than I think they even know. And that is the specific thing which I think Siama pulls apart and displays for us really perfectly here in Petite Maman. That bittersweet feeling of meeting someone fleeting over some short period of time, maybe over summer or something. And Siama takes that and really interestingly weaves that into the themes of letting go of family members when they pass away. And it's just done so well in that typical Siama sort of really smart way where you just like, you are just too good at this thing, aren't you, Celine? And it helps that she's got really good child actors as well in this thing. This is a sort of film which would fall apart if you had child actors which didn't know how to act at all. So I'm happy to say that Josephine and Gabrielle Sands are really fantastic. Obviously helps that they are actually sisters in real life. I'm sure I don't need to explain why that would help create a believable relationship on screen. Um, their blood, it adds up. But it's just so heartwarming watching them together on screen it puts a nice big smile in your face and it also helps when the film gets dramatic and emotional and it does that amazing thing which is a really weird strange specific love i have in films like this i don't know how to describe it really when two characters build a relationship and then you get that kind of crux of the relationship where they're just spending time together doing something 
this is sounding very vague as I talk about it. Remembering Call Me By Your Name when they finally got to go away on their trip together on themselves alone and that bit by the waterfall and everything uh, and I cried like a little baby. Petite Maman has, I guess, a sort of similar moment where the two of them at the peak of their friendship just sort of go out and do something. I'm trying to keep vague so I don't spoil much. Uh, hopefully you know what I mean if you've seen the film. You get the film's only music track. That whole sequence... Mm, that is this sort of shit that I am looking for in a film like this and I was just like Celine you did it Yes, please. There's not a huge amount I really truly disliked about Petite Maman, but I will say it's not my favorite of Siama's films Certainly coming off the back of Portrait of a Lady on Fire, which in my eyes is an absolute masterwork But I think versus all of her previous films this one is one which left me kind of I suppose wanting a little bit more and again I think that comes down to the fact that it is such a short kind of contained and I suppose relatively simple story in its structure and in its delivery. I mean, it flew the actual ever-living shit through its runtime. I sat down at the beginning of this press screening and was like, sweet, let's go, got my water. Um, and then it just sort of ended and I was up leaving. So maybe my biggest problem is that I wanted more of it. Part of that's a selfish, I want to spend more time with whatever Celine Siama puts out kind of perspective. But I do think part of that is also, it, it wouldn't harm the film to go a little bit deeper into things. But honestly, I didn't have any problems or any difficulties getting swept up in this thing. I thought it was a really wonderful, tender, heartwarming, an emotional and moving film that never overstays its welcome and delivers all of the stuff you want to get from a Celine Siama film. But what about you guys? Have you caught Petite Maman at any of the film festivals it's been screening at? Or are you excited to check it out when it drops in cinemas? I believe it's out in November here in the UK. So not long to go, but whatever you thought about it, let me know in the comments down below. We'll have a little chat. As usual, if you enjoyed this video and you do want to see me talk about more films, go ahead and click subscribe. That button's down there as well. I'll see you guys soon for some more thoughts and more films. But until next time, someone needs to stop. Celine Siema. I'm not saying like stop her, if you know what I'm saying. I'm just saying like knock her a bit. I don't really want it to happen, but it wouldn't hurt if she just made a film that wasn't that great. Just to remind us that she's human. Too much to ask?